The enslaving of the African race is a clear violation of the great law which commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Harriet Beecher Stowe's outrage over slavery inspired her to write the best-selling novel of the 19th century, Uncle Tom's Cabin. She made people see slavery as something that was happening to and being inflicted upon human beings. What Lincoln is supposed to have said when he met her at the White House is, so you're the little woman who wrote the book who made this big war. Though banned in the South, Uncle Tom's Cabin was read by millions, including Halver Kui, a Norwegian immigrant living near Northfield, Minnesota. The book changed Kui's life. As a result of reading Uncle Tom's Cabin, Halver Kui became an anti-slavery man. He enlisted in the war, and he told his family that he could not do otherwise, having read Uncle Tom's Cabin. And even though he was born in Norway, he felt this deep, deep commitment to the Union. Just as there were men on the battlefield like Kui, women warriors were also engaged in the fight. Harriet Beecher Stowe, fellow author and activist Julia Ward Howe, nurse Clara Barton, tireless advocate Sojourner Truth, and closer to home, Frances Clayton and Jane Grey Swisshelm. Swisshelm, a passionate abolitionist, published a newspaper in St. Cloud. She is formidable. I mean, I don't know what other word to use. She took on the people in St. Cloud who were slave owners. She hated the idea that these Southerners were coming up with their slaves to vacation. So there were lots of Southern sympathizers in St. Cloud. They would have been Democrats, and she would have been part of the emerging Republican Party. So they took a special umbrage at the vehemence of her abolitionism. They broke into her office one night and took that printing press and dumped it in the Mississippi River. I did not belong to anybody, and no one had any right to dictate what I should say, or when, or how. Though Swiss Elm railed against slavery, she also spoke in harsh terms about American Indians as did many European Americans after the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862. Minnesotan Frances Clayton was so determined to fight alongside her husband, she dressed in a man's uniform and mustered into the Missouri Cavalry under the name Jack Williams. The St. Paul Daily Press reported Clayton fought at Shiloh and Murfreesboro, where her husband was killed in action. Other women warriors supported the regiments in which their husbands served, or worked for the U.S. Sanitary Commission, which helped sick and wounded soldiers. Many immigrant women in Minnesota faced unique challenges at work, often alone on the farm. Minnesota I had so many young men because they were all recent immigrants to the state, and so young men go off to the war, leaving young women without any kind of family support around them to try to take care of the farm. All those connections, all that infrastructure was lacking in Minnesota. Almost all of the soldiers reported there were moments of intense fighting and then nothing, boredom. Whereas for the women who were involved, I think it was less intense at that moment, but much more constant. All of those things were ways in which women were involved, and they did what was within their power to do. Whether that was writing or preaching, recruiting people to join the army. The words of woman warrior Harriet Beecher Stowe are still treasured in one Minnesota family. He practically died, mm -hmm. leaving so much inequality for people he had never met. Today, the very book that transformed Halver Kui's life 150 years ago is still carefully preserved by his descendants, former Minnesota Governor Al Kui and his son Joel. He read this book, this, yeah. this one, and then how many lives have been touched by 
by these pages and these words and that story. Just amazing.